I'm at EPHJ today, and I came across this booth of Uxel, who makes his own microscopes, and uh, they are amazing. It's a, it's a 3D microscope in the sense that the, the camera is robotic and can move around very small objects. And uh, Uxel, why don't I let you do your pitch and uh, tell my viewers what, how you're, whatever you want about these microscopes. Sure, David. Thanks so much. Uh, it's it's a, re a great pleasure for me to, to discuss this with you. So a little bit of background info. Um, so I studied microengineering, microelectronics, uh, designing microchips for biosensing. So for about 10 years, I, I was a researcher at IBM Research. Uh, I was a very regular user of microscopes, uh, classical microscopes, uh, top or bottom. But we always uh, needed uh, some tilted imaging in our, uh, in our system uh, to image our microchips. So I, I made a microscope out of Lego uh, as a hobby. And then uh, IBM decided to uh, promote this. It got popular in the community, in the 3D printing, hobby electronics community. I got a lot of requests uh, to commercial. Uh, to and that's from them promoting the Lego-based version, yeah, um, not yeah. this yet, right? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. The, there was nothing about this. Uh, it was just a hobby project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, it started a little um, wave of uh, tweets and LinkedIn, a lot of social media. Uh, and then I realized that, yeah, in, in uh, my community at least, there's a need for such a tilting, yeah. especially for research labs, uh, more affordable uh, systems. To me, it was uh, missing. So, yeah, I quit my job uh, at IBM, started up, started up uh, MicroCubic in Canton Souk in Switzerland. It's been uh, almost uh, two years now, and about for the last, uh, I launched the product about a year ago. So I spent about one year on prototyping and patent application. So now I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really glad that uh, I'm, I'm selling this to now 25 countries. I read on EPHL's website, I think, that, that you've sold about 70 that's, as that's of a month or that's, two ago. That's correct, yes. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, thanks. And there's good interest, especially from the research labs, university labs. And now, uh, in this event, uh, I got a lot of interest from the watchmaking uh, community. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible for yeah, photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the microscope has three objective lenses. And it starts from, uh, uh, sorry. The, uh, the the magnification starts from really wide angle, so you can image a 10, 20 centimeter object with a wide angle lens. There's a medium zoom lens, which covers uh, a motorized range of about six centimeter down to 1.5 millimeter. That's the field of view. And there's a high zoom lens, which goes all the way down to micrometer optical precision. So you can resolve one, two micron features. A micrometer is a hundredth or a, a, a thousand thousandth? Of a thousand of a millimeter, yeah. 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 So for, here's an example. Uh, at the highest zoom, these are four micron lines spaced in 10 micron. And uh, in any bright field microscope, we are anyway limited by the physics uh, diffraction limit. So you cannot anyway image uh, features less than maybe 300, 400 nanometer. Yeah. Then you need to go to the scanning electron yeah, microscope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so this is close to the physical uh, limit. Almost. So the other thing that it can do is focus stacking for stills, right? So in that case, it's not doing video, but it uses a series of stills yeah. to create infinite depth of field, basically. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in advertising and cinema, which is yeah. b marketing is part of uh, watchmaking also, um, there's a, there, you know, historically they use these giant motion control systems to move cameras around that are like the size of a car, even if it's macro photography, just to get the stability. Yeah. And one thing that's really cool, I can tell by your demos, is that your motors are so precise that you can do that on a micro level. And also it looks like you can um, record and replay moves so that you could work out what you want, yeah. what, you know, including a, a zoom and a camera move? Yeah, correct. So currently, in the, in the current software, you're a little bit limited by the things you can do. For example, you can say, move 45 degree, or rotate, and then tilt 50 degree, uh, go to this zoom level, and record while you do it. 
but it's not like uh, you know in, in in Blender or other video Cur things Sp like Bezier yeah. curves yeah. and stuff we, like that. We don't yeah. have this yeah, kind yeah. of things so yet. Yeah, we, uh, uh, that's my dream because I, I, I like video editing and blend uh, and rendering. Yeah. So my dream is to 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 use such tools in microscopy. Uh, one other challenge is, for example, depending on the height of the sample, it's sometimes difficult to keep the sample always in the in the center. So now. Uh, uh, with a student, I'm working on the uh, inverse kinematics of the whole system. Yeah. To we will model the the whole mathematics and then uh, uh, use some algorithms to keep the sample always in the center. Yeah, that's During cool. this uh, crazy yeah. rotation. That is, the, that's actually like not that it's not. I'm sure it was fun to develop this whole thing, but that's like the icing on the cake to to, to yeah, develop yeah. those types of uh, absolutely tools and yeah. things. Because yeah. the, the initial goal was more more the quality control or taking still images, but uh, marketing videos or taking nice videos. Uh, that would be great with the full programmable tool. Yeah. Another thing, the fact that you you understand how camera virtual cameras are controlled, exactly, yeah. the same applies applies to physical exactly, cameras. Exactly. So that's really cool. And, and 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 you know, in other other big names, big cameras, tilt is always manual in this case. In yeah, the, in, I've in seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's great tools, but uh, yeah. yeah, in this case, that was the ultimate uh, or the my vision to have the tilt also motorized, yeah. which is super difficult yeah. because there's uh, too much weight, you know, all these high torque motors, etc. Uh, but yeah, exactly. I'm just wondering how much you could do um, eventually mm -hmm. in terms of um, choreographing a complex move and spending an hour, you know, developing it, but making sure that they, they're kind of like keyframes where it's, you know, you, if. First, you would develop it yeah. without worrying about focus, and then you would go in and, and, and make sure it's in focus the whole time, because yeah. that's basically what motion control is. Yeah, yeah. So right now, as it is now, what you can do is, for example, you can save this location already in focus mm -hmm. as, a, as a, a configuration file. Both as So it's a zoom, it's a position and position, a yeah. focus. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then save another one, and the microscope moves from one to the other yeah. feature. How much of that is, uh, is now or would be open like outside of firmware like something that for you know like if if you're in blender and you yeah. wanted to hack what you just told me you yeah. would just make a bunch of keyframes yeah like I, could you already do that like I mean, but that's in fact that's uh, what i did here in the in the demo mode so the list of commands yeah. to control and with some time delays you can control all seven motors and the illumination five different illumination uh with like uh single line comments. Yeah, yeah, cool. So it goes from one to other. No, I love it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I love the fact that you can yeah. do this stuff. Okay, so now it's uh, moving from one location to the other uh, by a prescripted uh, code, yeah. a Python script. And it will wait about uh, 10 seconds or so and then move to another location. And it will change the color of the LED just for for the demo. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. The, yeah. So it has seven motors. Yes, uh, this is insane. And in the next software updates, there will be also an interface on this software to add those keyframes. Yeah, I'm. I like writing uh, single line Python code. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you said one of the things that uh, really impresses me about what you've done is that you've done basically all of this on your own, and. Um, for my viewers, I also wanted to mention that Yuxel went to this university in Lausanne, which is about an hour away from Geneva, called EPFL. That's, did you get your PhD at yeah. EPFL? Yeah, that's correct, on so microtechnology. It, it, it's the Ecole Polytechnic Federal, de federal so it's a federal university, but they're, they're, they're really good at, um, uh, they have a great startup culture, and I don't think that this is out, actually out of that, but no. it's the, um, the mindset, like, um, Somehow, uh, I'm, I'm just, when I saw Yuxel's booth and then I realized that it was something that he had done himself, I was like, yeah. this is a great story because I really, I, 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 I hope that people are inspired. Anybody who's like doing their own thing is inspired by stories like Yuxel's that um, you can, that it's possible to do that. Uh, it's possible to actually use technology to, to accelerate what uh, pe people can do as individuals. Yeah. And uh, 
the more corporate the world becomes and the more we kind of are just slaves to high technology, huge high technology companies, I, I just love to see this. Uh, uh, and also, I mean, the, the, this uh, IBM research where I worked, uh, it's, the, it's the birthplace of nanotechnology. So the scanning tunnel in Microsoft. Is, that's the IBM's labs in Zurich? In Richley on Zurich, yes. Uh -huh. That's where the scanning tunnel in microscope, atomic force microscope, those things were invented. They have the Nobel Prize for this. Yeah. So there was always a culture of uh, trying, I mean, I'm not saying, of course, uh, this was inspired by that, yeah. but there was always this uh, cultural thing yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to the invent. Well, there's, there's a whole thing like you, you have, like to, to get to a position where you have the kind of vision or confidence that you can do it, you have to know that people yeah. did it before you and that, that yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's what these yeah, labs yeah, do. Uh, um, uh, exactly. And for example, I, I, when I made this uh, Lego microscope, IBM was really very happy about it, uh, promoted it. I, I don't think any other company would care this much. Yeah. So I, I really love this yeah. culture uh, at IBM. Is it yeah. almost, are those labs like um, the Bell Labs of the day or yeah, are they more? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very similar. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, That's cool. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Boulder, Colorado, where the yeah. National Bureau of Standards yeah, is yeah. located, and I worked at those labs as a lawnmower when I was a, a kid. But my parent, my my friend's dad worked in the labs. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I saw like I would go through the halls, and I saw like the shop where they got all their electronic parts. Everything was free. They would just go in, uh, and I was yeah, like, yeah. this is incredible. But that all of that affected me throughout the rest of my life, yeah, like. Right. Um, the understanding that everything has its origin in simple building blocks that are built up to be bigger things yeah, yeah. and that real people do it. One of the things that bothers me about Apple advertising is this whole illusion that everything is so clean, like it's almost to the point of like it's all happening in CG now. What, yeah, and I, I understand they want they want they want the message to be simplicity. Yeah. But yeah. the reality, I guarantee you, if you ever got access to their labs, it would be this this kind of. And I'm not saying yeah. anything about yeah. your world, no. but my world is like chaotic, messy. Um, uh, it's not. It doesn't look perfect until you reach that marketing stage, yeah, and then true, yeah. somebody opens the box, yeah. and there it is. Yeah. You know, IBM was a little bit different because they don't do consumer elect consumer products. We, we used to, from mean, that we, lab yeah. anyway. It's yeah, the, yeah, exactly. It's not I, oriented I, IBM research is yeah. focused to the next generation technology. Yeah. Uh, really, I mean, ten years ahead. Yeah. So it was a different. We, we sell. We, uh, I mean, IBM sells the technology to other companies so yeah. that they can develop organic LED displays and other things, yeah. and quantum technology. Yeah. And, uh, so, you sell, if somebody wants to buy this, I, obviously microcubic.com, your website, is a great place to yeah. get in touch. Absolutely, so I have the, the contact email on the website, so they can uh, write me an email. I have uh, uh, full technical documentation, video tutorials. Uh, yeah, we have to give also live uh, online demo. If it's in Switzerland, I also I can also give an, uh, an in-person demo. Okay. Yep. And um, is there a, is there a waiting list? Like, do you have inventory right now, or does it take a uh, while? Not or? much, <laughs> you know. It's uh, I, I, I get a good number of orders, uh, keeping me busy. Do you so, build them as you get the orders, or do you have a, yeah, a small I, I, inventory? I, I typically work in like ten microscope batches, batches. So uh, it, it, the lead time is typically three to four weeks. Okay. Because I have to wait for the also the electronic boards, yeah. uh, the 3D printed parts, which I outsource. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, good congratulations, and good luck to you. It's a thanks. young company, thanks. and uh, thanks, Dana. Thanks amazing. for having me. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank thanks you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.